Compare the picture Obama posted today for Pearl Harbor Day with Trump's photo, we elected the right man. This proves beyond a shadow of any doubt that we have chosen the right man to represent and lead our great nation. Today is the 76th anniversary of the day that will live in infamy. The bombing of Pearl Harbor by the Japanese, which killed thousands of our troops stationed at the naval base, many of which are still entombed in the battleship USS Arizona. This was the act which brought the United States into World War II. But what is even more humbling about this day is how President Donald Trump decided to mark the anniversary on social media. He made multiple posts telling about the heroics and tragedy of that day. These posts prove just exactly how much of a damn narcissist Barry Soetoro really was. He just couldn't step aside from himself long enough to actually be able to honor the lives of those lost without having to make it about him. All the while the leftists called President Trump a narcissist while failing to recognize that the real narcissist was their so-called messiah this whole time. Fox News reports. Pearl Harbor survivors remember those killed 76 years ago. Honolulu, survivors gathered Thursday at the site of the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor to remember fellow servicemen killed in the early morning raid 76 years ago paying homage to the thousands who died with a solemn ceremony marking the surprise bombing raid that plunged the U.S. into World War II. About 20 survivors attended the event at a grassy spot overlooking the harbor and the USS Arizona Memorial. They were joined by about 2,000 Navy sailors, officials and members of the public. Gilbert Meyer, who lived through the December 7, 1941 bombing, said he returned to pay his respects to his shipmates from the USS Utah, and say a prayer for them. The 94-year who lives near Lytle, Texas, was an 18-year-old fireman first class when a torpedo hit the port side of the Utah. He said he's still alive because he happened to be on a ship's starboard side. I think about my shipmates and how they were killed. It reminds me that we're lucky we got off and we've made a good country for them, Meyer said. Meyer later served in the battles at Atu, Kiska, Iwo Jima, and Okinawa. He witnessed Japan's surrender in 1945 from the deck of the USS Detroit in Tokyo Bay. Herbert Elfring remembered hearing bombs explode and first thought the explosions were U.S. training exercises. Then a fighter plane with Japan's World War II Rising Sun insignia strafed the Camp Makao base where Elfring, 19 at the time, was serving. The bullets missed him by about 15 feet, 5 meters. When I looked up and saw the red ball on the fuselage I knew it wasn't our plane, he said. I knew it was a Japanese plane. The Jackson, Michigan man is now 95 and said returning to Pearl Harbor for the anniversary of the attack makes him feel special because he's one of the few remaining survivors. I have one of those caps that says Pearl Harbor survivor on it, he said. It's amazing how many people come up and thank me for my service. Elfrain was in the military for the entire war, serving in Fiji, the Solomon Islands and the Philippines. When it ended, he went to the University of Michigan on the GI Bill, worked for a gas and electric company and raised family of five. The ceremony began with a moment of silence at 7.55 a.m. in honor of those who lost their lives, the same time the attack began. Four Hawaii Air National Guard F-22 fighter jets broke the silence, with one plane peeling off from the group to symbolize servicemen still missing. The heroes with us today ensured Pearl Harbor would not be the end of the story, said Pacific Fleet Commander Admiral Scott Swift. Instead of retreating from the fight, America's Pacific Fleet dug in its heels. Along the way, they forged a cultural heritage of resilience that sailors continue to draw upon today. The Navy and National Park Service host the ceremony each year. Usually, a Pacific Fleet vessel with sailors manning the rails passes by the USS Arizona Memorial during the event. This year, no ship participated because of naval operational commitments, said Bill Doughty, a spokesman for Navy Region Hawaii. More than 2,300 servicemen were killed in the assault by Japanese airplanes. Nearly half were on the USS Arizona which exploded and sank after it was hit by two bombs. Most of the Arizona's fallen are entombed in the battleship, which lies at the bottom of the harbor. What a difference a year makes!
Last year we had the self-loving Barack Hussein Obama to deal with. This year we have a president who unlike Obama, has accomplished something in his life other than living off the already overburdened taxpayers. Today our president honors the victims of Pearl Harbor without the need to infuse himself into the mix. He does it with grace and class, something our past president knew nothing about since all he has ever heard during his lifetime is how damn good he is. Maybe he was considered good to those of us who are self-hating Americans, but to those of us who are patriots and love our nation, he will always be a shameful footnote in our country's history.